sexual selection. What is it? Well, it's a special case of natural selection. In natural selection, individuals are under selective pressure by the environment. Those better adapted to the environment create more offspring. The furry sheep has thick wool to keep it warm, and its offspring grow thick wool too. Sadly, Charlie the bald sheep cannot handle the cold weather because he was not well adapted for the snow. Sexual selection involves competition for mates. The competition occurs between individuals of the same species. The bees only compete with the other bees for mates, and the wasps only compete with the other wasps. It's as if there were some type of invisible barrier between them. Sexual selection occurs in two ways, male competition and female choice. In male competition, males compete with one another for females. Male deer collide antlers until one backs down. The winner mates with the female. Female choice refers to when females choose which males they mate with. They often have many choices, so they want to find the best male. Choosy females cause males to initiate courtship displays, where they often flaunt their most desirable attributes to attract females. Female choice varies species to species. In long-tailed widow birds, females prefer long tail feathers. The longer the males' tails are, the more females they mate with, and the more nests the male birds have. Occasionally, male choice can also occur if the male puts in the most time and energy to the offspring. The roles are reversed. Female phalaropes have colorful displays to attract males, and if a male chooses them, they leave their eggs for him and leave. He has to take care of them and raise them by himself from egg to chick. Two theories for why sexual selection exists are the sexy sons hypothesis and the good genes theory. According to the sexy sons hypothesis, Females choose sexy partners so their sons will be sexy and attract more females when they grow up. However, this can lead to Fisherian runaway selection. Just look at what happened to the peacock, which used to look like its female counterpart but became more colorful over many generations. This happened because peahens prefer peacocks with big and colorful feathers. They mated with the prettiest peacocks generation after generation, and the traits became more and more exaggerated. But the flashy tail hurts the males' survival chance. While those colorful tails are mighty fine at attracting females, they're also good at attracting wild dogs, mongooses, and tigers. That magnificent tail increases its chances of being eaten. How come the tail got bigger and brighter when it attracts more predators? Well, the tail's benefit and cost is like a tug of war. Males with the largest and most beautiful tails attract the most predators, but they also attract the most females and create the most offspring. The tail gets bigger and brighter until the cost of attracting more predators equals the benefit of attracting more females, which lands the peacock right between the two. In the good genes theory, females determine which males have good genes based on things like size, appearance, and behavior. In this case, the females mate with the larger and stronger male that scared away the smaller male because they think he will produce stronger and more viable offspring. So, what did we learn? Well, sexual selection is just one part of natural selection. Sexual selection occurs when males compete for females and when females choose the best males. The sexy sons hypothesis explains how females choose sexy males so their sons can be sexy too. The good genes theory explains how females find males with the best genes.